Well, g'day all. Um, welcome to another edition of Fly Fishing in Nature's Realm. Now in this edition, we're going to be tying a dry fly, and this dry fly is imitating a dun pattern again. Now, I like to use um, the Highland Dun, the Cripple Dun. They're, they're great favourites of mine, there's no two ways about that. Um, the Shaven Brush, um, there's a whole host of different dun patterns that I do use. But it's funny how that um, you know you you have your favourites in the present uh, time, but um, going back in the past, you had favourites that you tend to forget about. And I was going through my fishing diaries, and going back 30 years ago, I used to fish a dun pattern called the quail dun or the Q dun, and um, I had that much success with it. You know, I'm going through my diary and. Uh, and how many fish I caught there, and how many brown trout, how many rainbow trout, and um, it was just amazing, you know. And I basically forgot about that fly. And um, you know, it's it's pushed me now to uh, tie this uh, pattern up again and have, uh, you know, a dozen or so of these flies and, and give it a, another go next time I go out for a, a fish uh, with the mayfly hatching. Um, now this fly, the quail done, was uh, developed and invented by a fly fisherman by the name of Barry Lodge. Now Barry Lodge is a, a fantastic fisherman and um, he's uh, written about uh, by David Scholes in his books and um, you know he really uh, um, you know obviously impressed David Scholes with not only his fishing but he's uh, the flies that he does tie and this fly he's given him full credit to it and um, it's a ripper guys, it really is. Um, and um, Barry Lodge um, fishes it in all of the Tasmanian lakes uh, around the Central Highland, Central Plateau and so forth. Um, so um, you know, if uh, Barry Lodge is uh, uh, or does get to uh, watch this episode, um, thanks very much for uh, developing a fantastic fly. Now, um, the uh, the fly, or the materials that we need to tie this fly, I'll put them up uh, right now in front of me. And you can pause at, um, at your leisure, uh, get your, your pen and paper, write all of the uh, details down. Um, and, um, yeah, you'll find that, uh, that you'll be able to follow it a lot easier. And also to... Um, if you can get yourself a copy of David Scholes' book, Ripples, Runs and Rises, um, the tying of that pattern and the story behind it uh, that was written by David Scholes is uh, in that book. So uh, you can get uh, further details there. So let's start tying the quail done. All right. So we first we take a size 14 hook and I'm using an up eye. All right. Some patterns I like down eyes and up, doesn't really matter. Um, but I like an up eye for a lot of my dry flies because it, uh, it tends to aid in the floatability of the actual fly. So we start off with the two third mark and we tie in our 6 o thread, which is a dark brown colour. Um, you can use light brown, um, it's up to yourself, it really is. So we'll cut away the excess here. And we will go down towards the bend of the hook. Stop when we're in line with the barb, which is around about there. Now, for the tail, what we do is we can use um, red cock capes. All right? Now, these are the cheap Indian brands. They'll just they'll suffice, guys. All right, because um, we don't need expensive genetic capes for the tail fibers. Just these will do the job. So select yourself further right from the back there, which is pretty large. So we get some good, stiff, long fibres. And there you can see some. And then just pick yourself a bunch, maybe two, maybe some from the other side. And Make sure they're all nice and straight when we do tie them in. 
Now the length needs to be around about a hook shank length. And we put that down like so, and then tie them in. And now the excess fibers will cut away. Now because this fly requires a body hackle, or, um, or what we're required to do next, is to get ourselves a length of copper wire. Now I've got some copper wire right in front of me already cut. But that's the copper wire I want. Um, you can get finer that, and the finer you can get, the better it's going to be. Um, but this, this is pretty fine, this copper wire, and it's definitely going to do the job. So we tie that in. And when you do tie this in, make sure it stands up to the two-third point where we're going to stop off. That way we get a nice, or well, a really even body that we need. All right. So we tie that in at this point here, and then wrap down towards the two-third mark of the fly. And if you need to build build it up to the shape of a mayfly dome, do so. Alright. That's good. Alright, now we need the body hackle. Now, for the body hackle and the main hackle, what I do is I use a genetic cape. And this is a ripper. Uh, this genetic cape. They're expensive guys, but they produce a hell of a lot you wouldn't believe. Um, so you definitely need those. And also normal capes as well. But normal capes we use for different different flies, different techniques. So let's uh, strip a few of the fibers off the stem there so we can tie the stem in. We tie it in at the two-third mark. And then we wind that around the shank and make it sparse but not too sparse. I like a little bit of extra hackle there because you know, this really floats the fly. It's quite amazing how good this body hackle can create a beautiful float. You know, and it's tied in a lot of different flies body hackles so yeah it's just fantastic now here I'll put copper wire and let's trap that in and when we trap it in and we go around and back to the two, third mark make sure you do it in even turns just to make a neat fly you know what I'm saying Weave your way through those fibers so we avoid trapping a lot of them down. And then we can trap that down. We cut away the excess copper wire and the excess body hackle over. All right, so there we have the tail, the body, and the body hackle. Now we need to tie in the wing. Now this is just a single wing, and um, what we can use here, well, the, the actual time calls for speckled hen feathers. 
Now speckled hen feathers is pretty hard to obtain and uh, I have uh, a bit of trouble getting that but um, when I can get some I buy as many as I can and I use that for a lot of different flies. But as a substitute we can also use turkey feather. Alright so here we have a turkey feather here and we can cut ourselves off a section and then what we do with that section of the feather there we roll it in half so bring it around roll it to the and that will give us our thickness that we want and then we can now as you can see that is too long so what I'm going to do is just simply get my feather and cut that away so to around a bit so there So there's our feather there. Now, proportions, all right? Make sure that it's around about a hook shank length or a little bit less than that. What you need to do is just basically tie it in. If it looks to the right proportion, move it. If it doesn't, undo it and do it again, make it a bit shorter. So let's see how we go with this. So we will bring that to around about there. That is perfect. Alright, cut away the excess. And then tie those excess feathers down. Put a few turns of the tying thread around the back of the wing so we go up and around to behind it just to around a bit there if you look at the natural done they are slanted downwards a little bit all right now we need the main cock hackle um, or the hackle at the front and what we dare use is a diameter which is a little bit bigger than the body hackle but not too big so let's strip away those feathers at the base there and again after we've tied that in let's judge it right? so we'll do one turn have a look at that. And that's pretty good. So let's cut more. Yeah, that's great. So again, a few behind the wing. A few turns of the hackle behind the wing. And then back to the front. Trap that in. Snip the excess away. And then just the last part of the fly is the front hackle. And the front hackle calls for quail feathers. Now your quail feathers, and I find you need wild quail feathers. All right, don't go getting um, any of the. Uh, quail feathers that uh, are for domestic uh, aviaries and such get the wild quail so the one where people go out shooting and they actually uh, use quail as um, a food source and you need to judge the size of the fibers so this can be tricky too so tight 
take away all the rubbish feathers at the base from the stem and then again judge it we only want about a turn, turn and a half so let's tie that in cut away the excess there Now, get yourself some hackle pliers because this is very fiddly. You wouldn't be able to do it with, um, you know, fingers. Well, if you could, you you must be very nimble because I can't do it. All right, now take the coil feather and go one turn. We run out of feather basically, and then we trap that in. Cut away the excess. Let's tidy it up. And then do a whip finish. One, two, three, four. Cut away the thread. And there we have it, guys. A quail done. Now, like I say, um, I think the great aspect of this fly is that the quail feather actually creates a darker dun. So, my tip would be to use this dun pattern when you've got a lot of cloud where it's a really dark sort of day. Some of them days can be great for dun hatches, you know, where um, it's, there's a little bit of a breeze. You'll find mayfly duns like to hatch um, when there's some type of wind. They sort of tend to know that it's not going to dry their wings out quickly. They'll dun, the duns will hatch on a windy day. They'll hatch in their thousands uh, because they know as soon as they hatch out, bang, they're dry and they're flying. They're in the bushes and they're safe. But, um, so on real dark, um, thundery, cloudy days, say for example, this is a pattern I feel that works well in those conditions. Now if you've got a day where it's partly cloudy and, and sunny, with sunny breaks and so forth, you look at your dun out in the water and it'll look very light. And that's where I think a highland dun would work well and so forth. So this really creates a dark, down out in the water. You watch it when you tie these up and you cast it out, you can see it really stands out. So that's the great aspect of this fly. It really is a good one. And um, yeah, tie some up. Um, and like I say, um, don't be afraid to um, try different duns and different patterns. You know, for every stage of all the different type of insects, there's so many patterns out there, it's not funny. And you tend to um, be confident with the, the fly pattern that you use um, all the time. And people tend to sort of like stay with them, which is fine. But if you hear of a fly, someone gives you a fly, give it a try. You'll be just amazed as to how you'll increase your learning, you know, your experience with fly fishing to make you a better fly fisherman. So, um, okay, that's the uh, quite well done. All right, guys, see you in the next edition 
or fly fishing in nature's realm and um, yeah let's hopefully hope that we can get out um, when this pandemic finishes and do some fishing bye for now